Boeing's in a little bit of a holding pattern today. Um, we are, there's something going on behind the scenes between Boeing and one of the airlines and uh, the FAA. And uh, so until it's sorted out, uh, airlines cannot begin the final, final inspection process, which would start to move planes back into the fleet and pro provide some clarity as to whether this is going to be relatively short term and contain or Julie, bigger and messier. Julie, after so that's, you were on, that's, okay, I, I just want to jump in. I, I just want to jump in because after you were on with us yesterday, news emerged that Alaska Airlines and United Airlines had both found loose screws in the inspection of this yeah. part. Uh, what does that tell you about the manufacturing or the assembly process? Well, United uh, in their release yesterday was very quick to note that this points to an industrial issue. Um, and it, the fact that it's in multiple planes is really, um, it's not a good, not a good thing um, right. for, yeah, for anyone. All right. So George, come on in on this. I, you know, I've been thinking a lot about Boeing supply chain. It's got to be a pretty complicated one. Um, I would guess that there's really no room for error when we're talking about planes in the sky. So how are you thinking about this? And here we are several days after that uh, Friday incident. Yeah. So, I mean, I agree with Julie on this. You know, it, it's uh, it, apparently whatever failure we had in, in the assembly or manufacturing uh, process, it was repeated, repeated enough times that uh, would cause concern, I think, on, on the Dash 9 fleet. Thankfully, the Dash 9 fleet is only 225 uh, aircraft, so it's, it's relatively contained from that standpoint. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think today the way we're looking at it as well is that, you know, while well, Spirit builds the majority of the fuselage, and, uh, and we believe that the, um, the fuselage comes with the plug in it to Renton, we know that Boeing... Uh, we hear that Boeing takes the plug out on occasion to load the aircraft with, you know, interior seats and things like that. And so there is a potential that uh, the fastening wasn't done correctly, even up at Boeing. Either way, it's Boeing's responsibility to get an airplane out the back door of Renton that's uh, airworthy and ready to fly. And just another indication of the challenges they're having both at Boeing and at the supply chain in producing aircraft so, that are, uh, you know, quality number one. So, George, net net, this could come down to worker error. Yeah, I think it, I think it's going to come down to worker error. Right? We'll, we'll see. Um, you know, I, I, my guess is it, it's probably not metallurgy of the fasteners and anything like that, because I think we'd have a lot more cases of this. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's going to come down to worker error. I think there's a lot of turnover at both Boeing and suppliers during the pandemic. Um, and, you know, po post that as, as that turnover occurred, as you replace those workers, management's responsible for training them well, supervising them on the line. Something broke down there. And we're seeing it, you know, at multiple points, right? This is the latest issue. We had the bolt issue for the rudders over Christmas. We had, uh, you know, uh, rear uh, pressure bulkhead issues last year. We had vertical stabilizer issues last year. So this is just one of a number of problems that we've seen in manufacturing. I mean, Julie, contextualize this for us. I mean, the 737 MAX is the most important airplane to Boeing. Uh, you know, we saw earlier, Boeing ended 2023 with the largest ever monthly sales haul for the 737 MAX. To what extent do the errors that George just highlighted that you've been highlighting for us all day today and yesterday, do those put that at risk? Um, yeah, well, we'll, we'll see soon won't we? Um, but absolutely in terms of, you know, for Boeing, the MAX is the commercial engine. It's really, um, it's where almost all of their backlog, uh, and they've got thousands of orders for this, this plane. So it's their future. And it's, this is the plane, you know, that potentially helps them shed a crushing debt load and fund, you know, new aircraft in the future. So, um, so to the extent that there's suddenly um, uncertainty around this plane and, you know, how it's made, how it will sell, it, it's not good. Well, and I guess when I think about airplanes, right, and carriers around the world buying them, it's Boeing and Airbus, George, right? So, you know, there's an interesting Bloomberg Opinion column by our Chris Bryant, um, who covers industrial companies in Europe, and he says Boeing becomes the poor relations and Airbus duopoly. 
Do you agree with that? And I, and I do wonder how something like this, again, another concern about Boeing after several years of really serious concerns, um, does Boeing become even a bigger laggard potentially when it comes to Airbus? You know, I mean, right now it definitely looks like a, a bigger laggard, right? And as we calculate backlogs, if we calculate them, you know, based on number of years and we give these uh, manufacturers some of, some of the future increases in build rate they think they've got coming, still Airbus, we think, has close to nine years of backlog, uh, Boeing closer to seven, right? So it, it is a duopoly. Uh, you know, the silver lining for Boeing is, unless you want to get in the back of line at Airbus, it's probably not quite s nine years because a lot of those airlines don't want their airplanes to country. Really. They've got them out for a decade or more, but maybe it's seven years of a backlog at Airbus. Unless you want to get in the back of a seven-year backlog at Airbus, you almost have to buy at Boeing. Right now, the quality isn't so bad that I think that's impacted. We haven't seen major customers walk away. You know, customers like Southwest, United, uh, Ryanair, those are core customers, Copa, Alaska, uh, but they really need to stem this because it, it is, you know, if you have a dual fleet, uh, you know, if you're flying like a Lufthansa right. and you're flying Airbus and Boeing aircraft, yeah, I think you'd want to tend to Airbus right now given the quality problems of Boeing. All right, so Julie, in a company that has faced, you know, we talk about the 737, the flights that crash, loss of lives, uh, it's been several years of some serious concerns and problems and issues at Boeing. So what seems to be the problem? Is it still leftover lag from cost cutting years? And, and like, what is it? Like as investors are trying to kind of understand what happens next for Boeing as an investment? Well, um, so in the next 45 minutes, what happens mm -hmm. uh, next for Boeing is the CEO is gonna uh, sit down and do a really crucial all hands meeting um, and just re-emphasize, I think, the core values for Boeing and um, and I think try to, you know, uh, uh, set the, the tone for the next few days. So that's that's step number one. But in terms of the, the root cause is really super complex and sort of all of the things that you mentioned. And I, I think we should give Boeing credit for, uh, you know, they have some really top engineering talent uh, tackling these issues in their factory, but it's really, really, really complex and deep rooted. They're trying to return to the way that they used to make planes mm -hmm. in the early 2000s, which was really sort of peak Boeing mm -hmm. right. for, you know, quality and reputation. Right. Uh, but it's, it's just going to be a very long slog, I right. think. And, you know, everything disruption in the supply chain, worker right. ex exodus, it all it all contributes. Hey George, I wanna give you the last word here. We got 30 seconds left. Uh, it's Airbus and Boeing, but China has been working on the C919 jet for more than a decade. In 20 seconds, is there ever a chance that this becomes a real competitor to Boeing and Airbus? Uh, there is, but I think it's a decade away, especially in the Western world, at least a decade away in the Western world. <laughs>